the last B, and we are done. So the proficiency, the last B is the, this, uh, this thing, the B. What do I mean by B? B or B not, there is no try. And why I want to share with this with you is because I, in the past 20 years, 30 years, I've met so many musicians, and not only musicians who just believe, hey, Dimitri, you are lucky. You were rich, you were born in a rich country. You were born into a rich uh, family, which is none of this is true. Uh, I, you, uh, I don't have time, I don't have money, I don't have talent, I don't have, no, fill in the blank, whatever. So many people believe that that is not going to work for me. And I just want to show you that yes, Anything that you think of can work for you, whatever you have in your mind. You absolutely have what it takes, absolutely. Doesn't matter who, what all these naysayers there tell you. By the way, I'm so grateful to every single naysayer in my life because it's thanks to them that I've learned so many things, so many things. I mean, at peace, complete peace with every, each one of them, by the way. Uh, so do you agree that having good luck is a good thing? Do you agree with this, guys? So I want to share with you this story. It is uh, 1990, and you're in St. Petersburg, in a 12th floor of a like, very boring, ugly building, a uh, residential building. You open the door, and right after the door, you bump into uh, a chair. I know this chair, th this guy, that's me, <laughs> sitting and making his violin. It's my first violin. And I'm sitting and making this violin, and you might be wondering, why am I making my violin on the lap? Well, because I had no table. I could not afford a table, uh, let alone a bench. I didn't have any tools. The tools that I had, well, I, why I didn't have tools? Because you couldn't buy tools in Russia. It's just not available. So the tools that I were used for making this first violin were made from fingernail files. So you, you bump into the, into me, there I am, here you see a size furniture with a green plastic phone with a dial ring, a giant uh, bookcase here, a window, piano, uh, another window overlooking the sea, and a sofa bed here, uh, a big 19th century mirror in the corner. That moment the phone rings. I grab the phone. Yeah, hi. Yeah, Vladimir Andreevich, yeah, I'm making my violin. <laughs> yeah, it's just how you taught me. What books? On violin making? Yeah, I don't have any books on violin making. A widow, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm very interested. No way. She, that's why we have our uh, countryside house. No, no, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then in that case, I do it tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, yes, yes, on. Bye. <laughs> Next morning. You see me jumping on a train, local train from St. Petersburg, that countryside uh, village where we had a countryside, um, our countryside uh, dacha indeed. And the train, imagine this green uh, train, all green inside, uh, all wood inside outside iron, of course, but inside is wood. And the train is going by with the speed of 12, maximum 20 kilometers per hour. The windows are opened. It's, a bra it's a September. It's sunny. It's after rain. It smells pines and fallen leaves and mushrooms. It's amazing. And you can stretch your arm out of the window of the train. And then you like a sh handshake with the birches growing by the rail. Amazing. An hour later, we arrived at exactly this station. Then just a very short walk. And we are in this uh, countryside house. And it's it, it's like very old, very abandoned. And once upon a time, it was blue, yellow, green. Now it was kind of greenish color. So we enter it's a glass veranda. You turn to your left, and you're inside a very black, dark black room, all wood, very, very old. And um, you see chests and boxes everywhere. And there is a bright light, sunlight, b like bursting through the window and in that sunlight you see a very old woman and what's striking this woman has so long and so bright and so perfectly combed silver gray hair it was like a wow uh, uh, the moment i enter she, she explodes like oh dima i have welcome welcome i have heard so many good things about you take a seat take a seat let's have a chat so i sit next to her and then she chats like somebody who didn't chat for 50 years. You know, Dima, I'm st I started to begin myself a little bit old. I'm 92, that's why I decided to move uh, to live with my grandchildren. I'm thinking, God gracious, she's 92 and she just started to feel a little bit old. I, I, f I wish I can be like her when I'm 92. And then she shares a story after story of Prokofiev and Mravinsky and Rostropovich and Shostakovich and all these people coming to her uh, apartment in St. Petersburg where she, ha she lived. 
um, Isabella Yakovlevna Orzi, and her husband was Bella Orzi, a violin maker in Leningrad, uh, which was called Leningrad back then. And um, uh, so, uh, and finally she asked, okay, Dima, you wanted to see the books? Yeah, yeah, of course, I want to see the books. So she shows me the, those books. Collector's items, you cannot find those books. They are completely out of print, very expensive. I've spent everything I had, all my savings that I've got also from my mother as a gift. So I just spent all this money on those books. And then she asked me, Dima, would you like to see toys, uh, tools? I said, you have tools? Yeah, I have plenty of tools for violin making from my husband. I'm not going to take them with me thousands of kilometers over here. So I would like to uh, sell them. Uh, yeah, I would love to see them. She uh, gets up from her chair. Okay, come. Yeah, it's here. Uh, and yeah, have a look here as well. And yeah, here, yeah. Have a look. And then I see those tools. Oh my goodness. Uh, rosewood handles, brass fittings, English handmade tools from the 19th, 20th century for violin making. A little bit rusty here and there, but overall it's like, I mean, I felt like a small boy who just found a treasure chest. So I'm asking her, how much? Oh, it's a thousand dollars. Oh, you mean thousand rubles? No, 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 I mean thousand dollars. Elizaveta Yakovina, thousand dollars, I can buy one uh, bedroom flat. Uh, anyway, look, uh, who has dollars? Dollars uh, just became legal. Just a few, uh, couple of years before, you would go to jail forever as a traitor of the state for owning some dollars. I don't have any. Dimitri, no, I'm sorry, it's a thousand dollars. I go back home. And there I am. I, I be, uh, bump into my family. I'm a very grumpy and I'm very upset. And Dimitri, what's up? What's wrong with you? You bought these books and you're not happy. Uh, yeah. I, I bought the books, I'm happy for this, but she's also telling, uh, selling tools, but she wants uh, uh, this, this money. What? Forget about it, she lost her mind. You can buy one bedroom flat in St. Petersburg for this money. I know, I know, but I want to, make, I want to become a violin maker. I will, forget about this, I, I want to borrow this money. So, what, borrow, you are crazy. You will never be able to pay back this debt. You will go to jail, they will kill you. Stop it. And while these very, very good, good people, they are very good people, very loving, very caring, and they're trying to talk me out of this deal, I'm thinking in my mind, what can I do? She is moving in three days. What can I do to make my dream come true? And this is when I go back to this green phone and I pick it up and I start dialing. Hi, Victor, a very dear friend of mine. He's the founder of the first uh, early music ensemble in St. Petersburg, <laughs> the guy because, because of whom I became so passionate about uh, early music. Victor, can you help me with some dollars? Really? Great. How much can you give me? Ten. Great. I will come tomorrow morning. I, I will explain you later. Can you, do, do you know anyone who, uh, who can uh, help me with uh, some money? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Can I get the uh, phone numbers? Thank you. So uh, after this, you see me dialing 200 numbers, uh, about seven minutes per call. When the, the answer was, sorry, no, who, who dollars, you're crazy. Uh, I, I said, thank you, I will explain you later why. Now I don't have time. So about seven minutes per call, 200 people, and I, by the end of the day, I managed to raise this amount of money that was indeed enough to buy one bedroom flat in St. Petersburg, uh, borrowing on average $20 from about 50 people. The next day, I'm on this train, this station, this dacha, Elisabetta Yakovlevna. Dimitri, you're here. Yes, I'm here, I want to buy those tools. <laughs> really, okay, that's very good. And that's when I select those tools, and then it's the time to pay. Oh, by the way, how I felt carrying this astronomical amount of money by train, all cash. I mean, how would you feel if you carried cash enough to buy one bedroom flat in your town? How, how would you feel? Especially when in the yeah. period yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I felt. And that's when I, I start counting those green notes, and I have never seen so much money in my entire life. And that's when my hands go cold. How I start to, uh, it's about, uh, I was nine, two, 21. And uh, 21. So I, I will ask, answer uh, quick questions later. And, um, uh, and then I start counting those banknotes and my hands go cold and uh, sweaty. And, I, and this voice in my mind, you are done, idiot. Stop it. You will never pay back this debt. Stop this egoism. You will take all your family to jail. Just stop it. <sighs> it's so loud, so noisy, this voice. And then there is this other very gentle voice. Dimitri. Trying to give you a helping hand. This is your dream. What are you waiting for? Do it. I've done it. I came back home. My family went nuts. 
However, what happened next is uh, this story somehow uh, went viral. Have you heard this crazy guy uh, bought a few chests of rusty tools? <laughs> uh, as a result, I got so much work, restoration, uh, gradually then repair. So it, to make this uh, short, uh, long story uh, short, uh, less than 12 months later, I've earned back all this money. I paid back my debt. And not only that, I've saved enough money so that I could uh, finance my relocation to Europe in 1994 and to really make my dream come true. And look, I could have listened to this, all these good people. Be reasonable. Don't be egoist. Stay where you are. And I could have chosen fear, but I have chosen faith. I have chosen my dream. And if I haven't, there would be nothing. There would be no lecture today. There would be no Wilhelm de Spala. There would be no old master stones technique, this, uh, um, the two millennia old uh, culture that I've revived, um, that in, in, enabled uh, the craftsmen of the past create their instruments a certain way. There would be no this amazing wife and this amazing kid and this amazing life that we have today. This is, this is the reason why I want to share with you uh, shared with you this, be, be, be or be not, there is no try. I want you to remember this, you can always choose your internal power to decide you can achieve your goals rather than external limitations such as lack of time, money or skills. Are you getting this? Yes or no? And with this I want to leave you guys, thank you very much. <laughs>